then. We're live on 3FM 92.7 as well. Let me just welcome now the Honorable Rashid Hassan Pelpo. is a member of parliament for the Wa Central constituency. He's also a member of the Business Committee of Parliament, which Alexander Fenyomarkin chairs. And you, you, you heard him make reference to that business committee and reason why there was no uh, that's order paper for today's uh, sitting. Also joining us right now, uh, Dr. John Osaikwapong is a Senior Development and Democracy Fellow at the Center for Democratic Development, CDD. Gentlemen, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Thank yeah, you. good evening, my brother. Great. It's always good to have you. And I want to start off with you, Honorable Rashid Pelpo. So even though the MPP MPs were the ones who triggered this particular uh, recall of parliament today, Based on what the speaker said, there was no business captured on the order paper. Alexander Peño Markin says that based on the memo that was sent for the recall, there were some items captured there. And so he had instructed the clerk to parliament that there was really no need for the business committee to meet because the issues were already spelled out. Is it consistent with parliamentary practice? It's very uh, well good evening to everyone i think it's very very inconsistent and very very um unprecedented we we don't have a situation like that to be referred to that in a situation where parliament is recalled in a manner they have done you look at the recall indication and say that forms the business committee um that that then will be the report to the business committee and will then be used as a as the other paper. No, definitely no. The business committee is a special committee in parliament that says once a week to define the business of parliament and read before parliament by the leader of the business committee, normally the leader of government business, in this sense, um, would have been himself, who would have read it to us or by the majority leader and then it is debated and it is approved. But so if, if it doesn't come from the business committee and approved by the house, there's no business of the house. No indication can be done by a single individual like Afenio Markins to represent the views and content of, of um, the business committee report approved by the plenary. So I think it was completely out of place for him to have said that. I see. So it is inconsistent with parliamentary practice that he, even though as leader of the NPP caucus, he cannot suomoto uh, instruct the clerk to parliament about a particular item or a number of items to be considered as the business of the house to be captured on another paper without consultation or sitting with the members of the business committee. That's not done. It is definitely so. It is impossible for any single individual to present a business to the House and expect the Speaker to take it and adopt it and present it as if it was a reason we were invited back to the House. The business committee is led by the majority leader, with the minority leader being the ranking. It, is also, it also involves the two whips, majority whip and minority whips, and then selected members from the house. Mm. So I have been in business committee since 2000 and uh, since 2008, no, 2012. Mm. And I have, I have still been there. I just moved out of the business committee um, uh, right now, but it, it has nothing to, 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 to spoil the fact that I've seen consistently for more than uh, more than 12 years, three times what the business committee represents. So I, I think that it has never been, um, there's no precedent in which the majority leader or minority leader will present his views in a recall and then the speaker will act on it as if that is the business of the house. In fact, that would have been inconsistent with the law, the standing orders, and would have violated the overall content of uh, reason for businesses in the house. Businesses are arranged by a committee, a standing committee of the house, and the standing committee is the business committee. 
Okay. And, it, and, and they just cannot present the business committee to even to the speaker. The business committee is presented to the house. And I the see. house did deliberate on it and approve it. Well, Dr. Kwapo, I'm going to bring you in a, in a bit on this particular issue, but th there's one outstanding question to you, uh, Dr. Rashid Pelpo, that yeah. before this, this recall, there was another recall uh, that was some four months ago by the same MPP MPs. When that recall was triggered, did the business committee meet to spell out the issues or the details of the order of business? Well, uh, the matter didn't come up at the time. The issue was about whether we were enough to make any decisions at all. Even to decide whether to approve business or not to approve, we had no numbers to do that. And so there was no need even going back to uh, find out whether there was business or not. Well, but uh, so, even before the, the, the vacancies matter came up, there was yeah. a previous recall in which the speaker even expressed some concern about uh, how mm -hmm. the MPP MPs went about that particular recall. That's the first time that you started sitting at this Accra International Conference Centre venue. You recall that? Did the business committee, that is where, sit to have the, the issues, as, as in the order, paper, and matters to be discussed, also considered? Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, um, at the time, at that time, I had moved out of the business committee. But the truth is that if you want to change anything and allow, you know, they say parliament is a, um, is a master of its own rules. And so if there is the need for us to summarize the content of any business at all, um, it can be done with the approval of the speaker, and the leadership. Right. If the leadership, yeah. So if, for example, today, leadership had met the speaker and presented an issue and say, look, because of the exigencies of the time, um, the business committee could not meet, but this, and then give some reasons which are tangible, the speaker would have come to the chamber to discuss the discussion he would have had with the leaders and then spell out the issues and then call the the, right. the, the minority leader to spell out the issues, and then the um, the house will then begin to see. I mean, look at it and to accept it or not accept it. Right. But it is not. It's difficult. Really, really difficult for anybody to uh, present issues to the house without the business committee and without the uh, deliberation and consent of the house. Well, until today, it, we're, we're we're getting to know that <laughs> it is possible actually, but based on Alexander Penyomak. But you say that. Um, uh, that's that's abnormal. That's that's not consistent with the practice of uh, the of Parliament essentially. And uh, that's why I bring in Dr. Sai Kwapong because I mean, with, with this matter that's been happening in Parliament, you've been following it quite closely. Now the positions are quite entrenched. There's been a call and a recommendation for some intervention so as to ensure some compromise and negotiation as well. In what form should that take? Who has to initiate this? Good question. I mean, among uh, good evening to you and uh, good evening to Dr. and your um, listeners. <laughs> Who has to initiate it has to be uh, the leadership of, of, of parliament. I have been, you know, in my reflections today, I've been saying to myself that some of these parliamentarians have worked with each other for years, have known each other for years. I'm sure they've developed, some of them have developed very good friendships. Some of them have built very good relationships over the years. Um, and for me, those, that kind of soft power is what are the levers you want to push uh, in moments like this when it seems like... Um, everyone is digging in and everyone is, you know, taking an entrenched position. Between the, re the announcement of the recall and today's sitting, my expectation and my hope was that enough conversations would have gone on uh, in the background, uh, enough discussions, and the building of some kind of agreement or consensus <clears throat> to allow the House then to be able to sit today and conduct, and conduct business. So it was a little disappointing to see that 
uh, it didn't happen. But hopefully, um, you know, a couple of leaders from the NPP side, from the NDC side, together with the speaker, I'm sure can get together and resolve uh, this, this impasse so that parliament as an institution can do its business between now and when the ninth parliament um, comes, comes into force. Other than that, my understanding is that the, the, issue, at, the issue that triggered all of this which is what does Article 971 GNH mean? Um, if my understanding is correct, the court will rule on that substantive matter. Yes, on the 11th of November. Okay, so then without this sort of gentle person's agreement that I was hoping could have brought the House into some consensus compromise to be able to sit today, uh, I'm guessing we would have to wait for the ruling on Monday um, and then... Um, it is, I mean, I'm, 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 my expectation is that once the court comes down on whatever that um, provision truly means, then Parliament will take its cue from that, the Speaker will take its cue from that, and then uh, Parliament can move on based right. on that interpretation that has come from, from the courts. But I agree, if, if, if leadership on both sides can find a way meet with the speaker and resolve this and take it back to their caucuses so the caucuses can also then agree and return to conduct the business. That, that, that would be great. And, and talk about the fact that there's what has been described as agent government business at stake on the ice as we speak. Now, a quick one. There's been calls on the president to also step into this matter. We've seen the Council of State meet the, the, the speaker. Today we got to know they, they've met Alexander Penyomakin, and we don't know as yet if they've met Dr. Kessler to force him because he did not mention that. But is it time for the executive to also step in to bring a truce to this? I would wait for parliament itself to resolve this, right? See it as... This is a matter for the institution of parliament to wrestle, to wrestle with and come up with some um, uh, resolution based on their own internal uh, processes, discussions, conversations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, especially because I'm not sure how the, I don't even know now who to call the minority or the majority, especially too because I'm not sure how executive intervention would be received um, by, you know, by the NDC side, I would um, pause on that for now and right. just let Parliament find a way Deal with their own issues. Of, right yes, on. out of this challenge. Perfect. Dr. Sakwapo, stay with me. And Dr. Rashid uh, Pelpo, just a, a, a minute on this. So with, with what's going on now, what's the thinking of what should be the considered solution to this particular situation that Parliament is faced with? Quickly. Well, first of all, in order for the speaker to be able to address parliament and to seek approvals or consent or a vote in parliament, we all have to be in parliament. There have to be a house sufficient enough to be able to take a decision. And so the first ruling by the speaker or the ruling by the speaker now says that the four members of parliament are no longer members of parliament. The Supreme Court has taken a decision on that. We have to get back to parliament, sit as he ruled earlier, and if the speaker has to make any decision, he will now make reference to the Supreme Court ruling and make a pronouncement. Now, the APP guys or members of parliament are unwilling to come and sit as minority, but it is a logical way to go for them to come in sit us in the minority as was done by the speaker, then the speaker will now say, now I've received some ruling by the Supreme Court, and then he will spell out the ruling, and then he will now say, well, this is how it is, and so let's obey it, and so we will now not implement um, the decision as spelled out in the Constitution until it is interpreted, until the, the law is uh, now, inter you know, now interpreted by the Supreme Court. After which right. we now say that, look, the, Supreme, the, the speaker has ruled again based on what we now all hear on air, in the media, 
but not right. truly communicated to us in Parliament. Right. And so it, it's important, but essentially, it's also important for the uh, minority group now, the MPP side, to, to speak with their speaker and to speak with their colleagues. I mean, right. they, are too, uh, they are too far away from seeking the solution. They stand alone, take their own decision, get on the media, attack the speaker for unfair reasons, and, you know, unfairly. And you look at the accusations and you right. wonder whether they really want to see solutions to the problem or not. Okay. It is right for the speaker to rule on this matter as it had been done in two earlier situations. So if he rule on it right. and you not take the matter to court, it did it, now it doesn't mean that the earlier ruling um, mm. is, it, it, you know, can, be, can be ignored. Unless right. we get back to parliament, sit down for the speaker to rule again. And that is it to, for, for you to even have quorum, to, to even do, yeah, to yeah. do that. The, Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you so yeah, much for your you. for your thoughts on this. Appreciate you. Uh, Rashid Pelpo is Member of Parliament for the War Central Constituency. In fact, he's one of the longest seven MPs that we have in this country. He's been, he's been part of the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, and this 8th Parliament. And he's hoping to be part of the ninth Parliament as well. We'll see. I thank you so much and I wish you well.